my loyal subjects. Once more, I do enjoin you to cook with the king. state of isolation, my uh, man-cook having gone himself into self-isolation, I, as your king, have had to turn my hand to many things. I have had to shift for myself. You'll recall we did make flesh pie, thence we did make vegetable pottage. Perhaps as a change to these heavy meals, I have decided that today we will make a sweet, indeed, we will make a biscuit. It is a receipt left for me by my man cook, and it is most suitable to those of a tender age. We are to make gingerbread. Now, gingerbread has a long history, all the way back to the early medieval times, when indeed monks and such like to use up stale bread would by concoction of ingredients, make ginger bread with alcohol and such like. There is no alcohol in this receipt, nor is there any stale bread. We have no bread in the pantry. It has all been et. Thus, before you, we have the ingredients for this delicacy of gingerbread, which is a particular favourite of my daughter, the Lady Elizabeth. Indeed, some day since, a, a, a passing necromancer did say unto me, your, your king, that in the future uh, there will be a Queen Elizabeth, and she will fashion gingerbread into the shapes of men and women, and these highly decorated gingerbread men or gingerbread women will be placed upon the table at great banquets representing that queen's favourites. Now, that is a splendid story. I must admit it is naught but a story for I can never see this great realm of England ever having a queen. Uh, the necromancer may indeed have been talking of a Queen Elizabeth in a foreign land. Hmm. So in any event, these are our ingredients. Thus, for our gingerbread, we have 12 ounces of plain flour. We have one teaspoon of soda ash. Now, you may know this as baking powder or that modern contrivance bicarbonate of soda. In addition, we have two teaspoons of ground ginger, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, together with four and a half ounces of butter, six ounces of soft brown sugar, and one egg. To finish, four tablespoons of rich golden syrup. So these are the ingredients for our gingerbread, which, when cooked, we will attempt to decorate. For this, we have two tablespoons of powdered sugar, which you may know as icing sugar. You may make your own powdered sugar by grinding sugar in a pestle and mortar. We need to take a squeeze of lemon and a small quantity of cold water. To begin with, I take two to three tablespoons of flour, I place it over the bowl, which has a sieve, and I sieve the flour like so, into the bowl, sieving out the lumps, 
And then I add the soda ash, the baking powder or the bicarbonate of soda. Then I add the ginger, like so. And finally, the ground cinnamon. And again, I sieve it through, sieving out all of the lumps. Then I add more flour. And by sieving it like so, we actually add air to the mixture. And there you see the flour being nicely sieved. Having sieved all of the flour and the spices into the mixture, again to remove any lumps, but more importantly to put air into the mixture, I then stir in the bowl to ensure an even distribution of all the spices amongst the flour. Having done that, my next task is to cube the butter. Now I take the butter, like so, I'll remove this dish, then with a sharp knife I cut the butter into slabs and then having cut the butter into slabs I again cut it further to make small cubes as you can see. The smaller the cubes the easier the butter will be rubbed into the mixture. Once all the butter has been cubed take a few cubes of the butter and with your cold clean hands rub the butter into the flour using the technique that I demonstrated when we did make of the flesh pie. When all of the butter has been added to the flour and the mixture keep rubbing until the whole has the appearance of breadcrumbs. We then take the soft brown sugar, we pour in the soft brown sugar and then we cut and mix the sugar into the flour. Having broken our egg, we then add it to our bowl, like so, and I gently beat the egg with this modern contrivance called a whisk. When the egg has been sufficiently beaten, the yolk and the white of the egg has all been beaten together to the appearance of a light but golden yellow, I then slowly add the golden syrup. You may need to assist it to come out of its container when you have harvested all of the golden syrup from the bowl we then beat the egg and the syrup together. When the egg and the golden syrup has been beaten together and together it has the appearance of a froth upon it then I do pour a small amount into the flour and then I do fold it together. We continue to add the egg and the syrup mixture little by little and folding together to make what appears to be a dough. You take the dough from the bowl and you knead and knead until you form a ball. That ball is then wrapped in a cloth or some modern day equivalent and placed in your coldest room or indeed your coldest place to chill for about 50 minutes which is exactly what I am now going to do. I'm going to chill. <laughs> Before we proceed to the next stage you should go to your bread oven, set it at 160 degrees if it is a modern contrivance called a fan oven, of which I know not, or at 180 degrees if it is not a fan oven, or alternatively set it to log mark 4. Then 
remove the dough from your cold place, remove the outer covering and place the dough upon a pre-floured surface. Turn the dough in the flour to ensure that it is covered and when it is covered you take a pre-floured rolling pin and in exactly the same fashion as we did some days since in the making of the flesh pie we roll out the mixture. We do roll and turn. We roll and turn. By so doing we aim to achieve a round area of dough which ultimately has the thickness of quarter of an inch. Roll and turn. Roll and turn. When the dough has been rolled to about the thickness of a quarter of an inch and when you have lined a baking tin with that which is known as greased proof paper I do take my dough cutters and here we have some splendid cutters in the shape of ladies and gentlemen so here I place the cutter in the shape of a lady upon the dough here there is the shape of a little child I think I will make a family of gingerbread people here is the cutter of the man and I will place it so and here is the shape of a little girl these are placed upon the dough and ensuring the sharp edges down they are pushed through the dough now in a moment I will cut further shapes making as many figures as this dough will allow and then any dough that is left I will re-roll and cut further figures until almost all the dough is used. And there you have it, a range of gingerbread ladies and gentlemen and children about to go into the bread oven for 12 to 15 minutes or until they're a light golden brown. And there they are. Uh, gingerbread ladies, gentlemen and children fresh from the bread oven and the smell, the smell is glorious. Now you are to leave them in their baking trays for about 10 minutes to cool and then after 10 minutes transfer them to wire cooling racks. And now they are completely cool we are going to begin the decoration. As to decoration, we have all the ingredients here. We have the ground sugar, we have the lemon, we have a quantity of water. Firstly, you take of the lemon and cut it in half. Then, with a device called a juicer, you extract the juice from the lemon, like so. And in this instance, I will use both halves of the lemon. And then, when all the juice has been extracted from the lemon, I take the juicer and I pour the lemon juice into the sugar. And then, with a small spoon, I begin to mix the sugar and the lemon juice to make a paste. When I have made a paste, I may add a quantity of water to ensure that it is not too runny, but is sufficiently runny to be able to write and decorate with. When you have achieved the right consistency of the paste, you place the paste in a muslin piping bag. However, if you do not have a muslin piping bag, then you may use that modern contrivance, which I'm told is a freezer bag, for which the corner has been removed. You may then fill with the mixture and begin to decorate. So here I'm attempting to design a gable hood on this splendid Tudor court lady. And then we have her decolletage, like so. 
and her kirtle. And here I have my gingerbread court. So, and who may you be? Hmm. You are Catherine of Aragon. So this young lady must be the Lady Mary. <laughs> so who? Who are you? You are Berlin. And you? You must be the Lady Elizabeth. <laughs> And you, therefore, must be my beloved Jane, Jane Seymour, of glorious memory. Which means that this, this young fellow, is naught but my heir, the Prince Edward. Now you, I may see, you are that ugly Flanders mare, Anna of Cleves. You, you, are that foolish girl, Catherine Howard. And here, I have my present wife, the kindly queen, Catherine Parr, my Kate. So, what's to do? Aragon. For 24 years she was my wife, although in truth she was never my wife. She was my sister. I did cast her aside. Thence, beguiled by that poisoning witch and whore Berlin, she she did play me false, and for this, she did die. <laughs> Here. Here. My beloved Jane. Should you give unto me that one thing a king doth desire, a son, a prince, an heir, and in the very moment of her victory, she was gathered unto God. You, you, you are that ugly Flanders mare, Anna of Cleves. I did like you not. And here, here, that foolish girl. That foolish girl, Howard. She too did play me false. She did love to dance, and to dance, and to dance with all manner of lowly men. And there, my splendid wife, my Kate, the most kindly of queens. But who? Who here? How do you have? Mm. Two fellows. But who might you be, sir? You not Thomas More. My friend. My counsellor, the most honest man in England, but he, he did fail me. He was a true son of the church. His heart was with Rome, and for this he too <coughs> did lose of his head. And you? You, you must be Cromwell, Cromwell, 
my dear Cromwell. You did lose of your head in fifteen and forty. No king, no king e'er so had so, so faithful a servant. You did serve me well, did you not, Master Cromwell? And at the end, you did cry for mercy, mercy, mercy. And I did not heed your calls. And in the losing of your head, I did lose a wonderful servant. I regret Cromwell. My loyal subjects, I do hope you have enjoyed this video and indeed we do endeavour to publish two videos a week. If you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel and see all of the videos then be pleased to indicate here. And you my loyal subjects, whilst we still struggle in isolation against the scourge of the Covid. May God bless you all. Mercy, mercy, mercy.